On this week's episode of the Instagram polls, I gave you another four options. It's David underscore Seymour one. If you don't already follow me and you want to vote in the next one. And as you can all see, Rie's Japanese recipes did win by one percentage point. But we are in yet another situation where I have to order a bunch of stuff and it's not going to get here until next week. Back in the day, I was always able to order stuff and then do that same recipe in the same week because I have on Amazon Prime, which gets me stuff in two days. Uh, apparently, two-day shipping doesn't exist anymore with the world that we live in and it takes a little bit longer to ship stuff to my house. But it's no biggie. We have something to look forward to next week at least. Uh, for this week though, we're going to be trying out Joshua Weissman's Perfect Cheesy Calzones. You guys have heard me say this before, but when it comes to pizza and calzones and strombolis and similar foods, I'm super picky. I grew up with such great Italian food from my family, all the pizzerias around me, so I'm a stickler for this stuff. I do trust Joshua a lot to give us really great recipes though, so let's get right into this one. If you are at home and wanting to make this giant Italian empanada, you're gonna need to grab some San Marzano tomatoes and double zero flour. Salt and pepper and fresh basil, some granulated sugar and olive oil, warm water, active dry yeast, some low moisture mozzarella, red pepper flakes, and a fresh red bell pepper, some soppressata or supersad, as I like to incorrectly call it, fresh garlic, a sweet yellow onion, some parmesan cheese, and salami. So over the years, I've grown to accumulate quite a bit of patience um, through doing these recipes, getting a little bit older, you know, I don't mind just putting in time and maybe a few extra dollars to get great ingredients, get perfect results. With that all being said, I have never made a dough in my life that requires this much proofing time. We're gonna combine our four ingredients, very particularly on a scale to the gram, and then cover it up and let it rest for 24 hours. This is to create a whole ton of gluten development so you barely even have to knead the thing, and you're leaving it at room temperature which in my house is about 56 or 57 because apparently we live like polar bears. To be fair, I also like to occasionally grab an icy snack out of my window off my roof, so I guess I can't really complain about my house temperature. But I got my dough together, I covered it up with some plastic and a lid and let it sit out for 24 hours. The next day when I came back to it, I realized I probably should have oiled the bowl or at the very least put some flour down because didn't want to come out. And then next, you have to equally divide this into four equal portions, roll them up into their little dough balls, and then let them rest again for another four to five hours at room temperature to completely finish the fermentation rising proofing process. I know this might sound unfair and I have to work on it, but in the past, I've realized I'm so predisposed to be more picky and like critical of recipes that take this long just because I expect them to be so great. I have such high expectations, so it goes both way, I guess. But while they're rising the second time, I worked on everything else we were gonna need, starting with my tomato sauce. Feel free to crush your tomatoes up by hand. I don't really love huge chunks of tomato on my pizza, so I gave it a quick blitz with my immersion blender. I started this sauce with some olive oil and garlic and then let everything reduce and get to know each other. That sugar, the red pepper flakes, some salt and pepper. I threw that off to the side while I started to chop up all of my peppers and onions. We're gonna be using two bell peppers and then one medium-sized sweet onion for this. I was trying to cut these down to what seemed to be like the perfect manageable pieces to be inside a calzone. I kind of hate when pizzerias leave huge chunks of vegetables that you like pull out with your teeth. I got mine all chopped up. I threw it into a saute pan with some more olive oil, some more salt and pepper. You can take these guys as far as you want. Like you can caramelize them if you want, but I like mine almost like an al dente pasta with the tiniest little bit of crunch in the middle. And very lastly, we got to prep up our cheeses, the mozzarella and fresh parm. And I'm doing a mixture of one part fresh Parmesan to four parts mozzarella. In my case, that's about a half cup Parmesan to two cups of mozzarella. But finally now, and only now, can we grab our dough mounds and start to make our calzones. You're trying to go for about a third of an inch thick here. Try not to get super thin spots in the middle because those will probably leak or burn like really fast in this oven, so just be careful. Now the only thing that stuck out to me in this video that I didn't fully agree with was this comment. Then a nice layer of your peppers and onions. Be careful not to overstuff. In my opinion, overstuffing is is not a thing. As long as you can get it fully closed and crimped, like who cares if it's loaded with stuff? 
In fact, if you go too light, you might end up with a huge gaping hole that's absolutely no shade at all. That's the way he likes it, but I would be a little bit disappointed if I ordered this in a restaurant and got that. Now I had my oven blazing hot, as hot as it can go, about 550 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour before I even got this thing in there. And although I successfully got my calzone in on the stone, it was looking delicious. Can we get a RIP in the chat for my pizza stone? I've had it for a while, but it just cracked. If anyone knows why this happened, was it too hot for it? Did I not take care of it properly? I'm not sure. But at least we got one last really great food item from it. I mean, the leoparding on this dough looks incredible. I love the way the cheese is all caramelized. So I topped this baby off with some of my marinara, some more parm, and a few little sprigs of thinly sliced fresh basil, and I am dying to give this guy a try. First of all, this is one of the biggest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, it might be hard for you to kind of like get a good scale. It's like bigger than my entire head. Look at that undercarriage too. Such good color all around. RIP to our pizza stone. Mmm! It took me a second there, but after I like swallowed and took a sip of my drink, uh, something was burning my lips and I forgot that I put chili flakes in that tomato sauce. Um, but it's really nice. It comes right at the end. Like, it's pretty unexpected, but it's super tasty. I'm gonna be honest, I was fully prepared to rag on this dough, because in my mind, nothing should take 30 hours um, to make like this. But it might be worth it. I've had a lot of calzones and pizzas in my day, and even as thin as this dough is, the, the chewiness and like the overall flavor is so good. It has such a nice balance between that super hard, crispy exterior and then the really soft, chewy interior. This is just phenomenal. I've been sitting here recording for like 12 minutes trying to think of something negative or, you know, constructive criticism to say. And I can't think anything, you know, customize the fillings, maybe pull back on the, the chili flake if you don't like spice, I love that personally. But overall, like 10 out of 10. Great job, Joshua. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. As we said, next week we will get into Rie's Japanese recipes, so just hang tight. Thank you for your patience. Follow me over on Instagram and Twitter if you do not already. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. my life with my 18 yeah our style wasn't wavy but we had a vision sounds broke yeah i don't know actually actually never mind i fixed it